Okay, um, so let's do an example of where we're identifying the substituents that potentially could come off a chain, a carbon chain. So I have uh, 17 different substituents um, that you should know by now, and we're going to look at this particular carbon chain where all 17 of them are um, placed, and we're going to identify those particular substituents by the numbers relative to their names, okay? So let me just do this one, and then the next one y'all can help me. Um, so I'm just going to go through them one, two, three, four, and identify them by A, B, C, D. So methyl group, let's go look for a methyl group. So we see one here at G, right? So this group here is a methyl group. Okay, methylene. Remember, a methyl group is a carbon with three hydrogens. A methylene is a carbon with two hydrogens coming off. So there's your methylene at C. A methine, of course, is a carbon with one carbon or one hydrogen coming off of it. So I found it here at D. Okay, there's your methine carbon right there. So now we're getting into some of the groups. Isopropyl, well, you should know that one by now. That's here at E. Right? So you see the propyl group. Iso means that it comes off of that second carbon there. Isopropyl does. So that's E. Isobutyl looks like an isopropyl uh, group, except it's got one more carbon. Right, so if you see there, that kind of looks like an isopropyl with one more carbon, so that's a butane. So we call that an isobutyl group, so that's L. So a secbutyl group, that's going to be another butyl group, right, so four carbons. So if we look around, well, we've got two more. One's here, that's the tert-butyl, and the other one's here, the secbutyl. So secbutyl is A. Oh, and I gave it away. Turd butyl is that other one that I showed you. M. Okay. Neopentyl. So what does that mean? It's a pentyl group, pentane. Five carbons, right? So um, if you can look around, uh, this one might be harder for you, but the only group that has five carbons in it is one, two, three, four, five. There's your neopentyl group, okay? So it looks kind of like a tert-butyl group with one more carbon in it. So that's what J. Uh, vinyl group is where the double bond is c connected directly to the substituent or main chain. So if you have a double bond where one of the carbons is connected directly, that's a uh, vinyl group. So that's F. An allyl group has one carbon in between the substituent and the double bond. So right there, B. Uh, propargyl group, let's see, um, that one is a triple bond with a carbon attached uh, at the, um, the substituent. So the triple bond here has a carbon attached to it and that carbon is attached to as the substituent, okay? so. We see, well, there's only one with a triple bond, so it's kind of obvious where the propargyl group is. So that's H. Uh, phenyl group, so now we're getting into the benzene rings. Remember, a phenyl group is just a benzene ring by itself that's attached. So that would be here, I. And then a benzyl group, that's a benzene ring with one carbon more, right? So we've got the benzyl group here at O. And now we're into our amines, right? So these should be pretty 
straightforward for you. From so primary mean, the nitrogen is connected to one carbon. So it's right there, that N. Secondary amine, the nitrogen is connected to one, two carbons. So that's P. A tertiary amine, uh, the nitrogen is connected to one, two, three carbons. So that one is K. And then a quaternary ammonium ion, of course, the positively charged nitrogen is going to be. Okay, so we got all of these ones. Uh, there's one or two groups that aren't present on this particular problem that you do need to know, so make sure you go over those ones as well. Okay. So if there aren't any questions on this, it's pretty straightforward, just a matching one. Um, we can kill the video. Okay.